character study in the Bible. We, we were doing the conversion of Paul for two weeks. Now, today is our first Sunday of the month. So, this is our month of grace. Many of us know that Christ symbolizes grace. You will receive grace this month in the name of Jesus. Amen. Grace is unmerited favor. Things that we don't deserve, we get them. Things that we did not labor for, we get it. Things that we did not plant, we harvested. Things that we did not work for, we got reward for them. That would be your portion in the name of Jesus. Today I want us to briefly look at somebody in scripture called Mary. Somebody say Mary. Mary. Could be Mary, Mary. 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 Let's turn our Bible. Certain women which have been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. And let's turn our Bibles to John chapter 20. Ever <laughs> say the first day? The first day. Of the week. week. Come and Mary Magdalene. Early. When it was yet dark. When it was yet dark. dark. Unto the sepulchre. Unto the sepulchre. And see the stone. And see the stone. Taken away from the sepulchre. Taken away from the sepulchre. Woman became an example, or she's an example for us today. Many of us are willing to follow the Lord as long as it's convenient for us. I'm not saying about people here, but generally people. That's the way a lot of people are. But when they go and get stuff, I would say even the disciples fled. But not this one. And what did the Lord do for this woman? The Lord cast out seven devils. That. She found out that she is no more obsessed with all the demons that were disturbing her. And it touched her that God will love her so much as to remove the very reason that made her to look like a mad woman before him. And from that day, she started following the Lord, even to his death. But what is so striking is even 
even after death. Even after death. You know, even in marriage, they say to death, you must pass. Am I correct? So if tomorrow now I'm no more around, my wife is free to remarriage. You know? That's the law. Even after death, you should be saved. That's how she did a particular place. So on the cross, when she was Jesus was dying, she was dead. Just by his foot with the other Mary. And when Jesus was finally laid down, she was dead. She followed the body when Jesus of Arimathea got permission from Pilate and followed Joseph and Nicodemus to go to the place where they put Jesus. She was also there when they put a stone. But when the Bible, the Bible says there was, she noticed the stone as they put out, and she had a plan. But even though you have buried Jesus, I will still come and take him away. Brother, it is hard to find people like that in the world today. I heard from a man of God in Jerusalem. He said, if you are carrying the dead Jesus, you are still carrying the dead Christ. I think that's what the woman is trying to do here. Because the dead Jesus will only stay three days. Whether he has answered or not, he's still the Lord. And I love what she said. She still preached, she still called him the Lord. For her, it doesn't matter whether what is happening is right or wrong, dead or alive, Jesus is still my Lord. That's what she called him. In death, how many times? Is the Lord still our Lord? When things are so bad, do you still call him my Lord? That's the story of this woman. The Bible tells us, then she ran, then she ran it in verse 2. Turn the Bible there, because we'll be going through it. Then she ran it and comment to Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved. I said unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. She mentioned the Lord. For her, it doesn't matter that Jesus has given up the ghost. But there's something that happened here. She went to who? John the Baptist. Sorry, sorry. She went to John the Beloved and Peter. And what came to me was that there are people that God trusts with deep things of the kingdom of God. An event happens, who do you look for? And when people come to you as somebody that can be trusted with those information and knows what to do when things happen. It's important to know they didn't go to anyone, they went to John and Peter first. So we can be disciples, but we can pray that God will make us reach that level where if anything that concerns the kingdom of God is happening, you will be the first person that will be contacted. And I pray that will be our portion in the name of Jesus. Such an important thing has happened. The Lord's God is no more in the grave. And the first person that comes to her mind is go to Peter and John. These are trusted men of the Lord. Even though Peter has been saved, but he's still the best. Even though Peter denied Jesus, he's still the best. Even though he has weaknesses, we can't get a better person that we can trust with this kind of information. And to tell you that these guys were really disciples, immediately they told them. The Bible said they immediately went to the circle. They were not like, oh, the the soldiers who are after us. The Bible says they moved immediately. Go, let's go to verse 4. Peter, Peter
that therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did a wrong Peter and came first to the sepulchre. Brethren, in this race we are running. I want us to know that the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was, that was set before him endured the cross. He let us run the race with patience. If we are looking at man when we are running this race, every likelihood we will be discouraged. We can miss the track. You see, Peter and John were running to the grave. The same destination, they were going to where the master was. But along the journey, somebody overtook the other person. If Peter was looking at just the overtaking, he could want to polish his body and maybe collapse. Because each of us have different strengths in Christianity. I've come to realize that the strength God gives one person may not be the level of strength. But run with your own, and as you run with your own, you will reach that destination in Jesus' name. Amen. See, John used his youthful strength and ran. Peter was more elderly. He ran with his own strength. But both of them were looking to go to where Jesus was. They were not looking at each other who is running faster. I want us to remove our eyes from who is faster, who is more spiritual. All of us should look at Jesus. <coughs> He's the one that has called us. Because as you will notice, even though John reached first, the grace, the boldness to enter the grave wasn't in him. So if Peter was just looking at John and maybe stumbled or collapsed, John would not enter that grave. They would stop at him. But the other person had the grace. That's why I say all of us have different graces grace upon our lives. And the only person we can look to is the Lord. So when Peter reached there, he found out that John did not enter. And the grace of God over Peter, boldness that God gave him appeared. He entered that grace. Mary Magdalene initially didn't enter. She just saw that the stone was rolled away. And said, okay, maybe she entered. I'm not so sure. I'll read it again. But Peter entered in. And the Bible says, let's read the Bible. Then comes Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulchre and seeing the living clothes lie and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the living clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. When Jesus rose from the dead, the Bible says that Nicodemus and Ajatus of Arimathea, they bought things and they wrapped him up. The first thing Jesus did, or I believe one of the first things he did, was to fold the living cloth. And that tells us how appreciative God is for the little things we do for him. He didn't raise eyes from the dead and just go. Oh, he took time to wrap the cloth. If Jesus has time to wrap clothes when he resurrected from the dead, you will have time to amend everything that is wrong with your life. That's my prayer for you today in the name of Jesus. Amen. If he could do that for an ordinary cloth when he rose from the dead, everything that is wrong with your life will make it well with you. Let's continue to read. Then went in also the other disciple, which came first in the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not this scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own homes. So interesting. When they came, it baffled them. They looked at the grave. They believed
brought Mary Magdalene's brother that he has taken the body of the Lord. And so it was, it went home. Because a natural man, an average man, including ourselves, when somebody dies, that's the end. So even if they take the body, what is it? That is it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But not the same with Mary Magdalene. The Bible said in the ninth verse. And when the disciples went away, the Bible says, But Mary stood without at the sepulchre and weeping. That weeping was also prayer. And as she wept, she stood down and went to the sepulchre. Brother, I've never seen this kind of faith and love before. I've once heard that what made Elijah so great was passion. Elijah's passion. And David's law, I see in this scripture. I see two things. I see Elijah's passion for the Lord and the love of David for the Lord in what this woman did. The main disciples have left. They said, Mary, it's okay if they've taken the body. After all, he's dead. There's nothing we can do. He's dead. And because of that, Let's go. We cannot do anything for them. And so they left. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But not for this woman called Mary. Mary stayed back and continued weeping. But the man had already died. The man is there. Why are you still crying? And she refused to go. And to tell you this was an expectant prayer. The Bible says, as she prayed, she stood down and she looked at the sepulchre. She was praying with expectation. No wonder the thing touched God so much. You know, if you read the Bible, the Bible says that, if you read the next verse, the Bible says, and see two angels in white city, the one on the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus was laid. These two angels, I believe, were there when Peter and John came. Because the Bible says they stood where they laid Jesus. But they didn't, Peter and John didn't see him. It is the woman that showed passion. I want, what, I, what I want you to take away before you leave today, have passion for God. Have passion. Or much passion for the Lord Jesus. This is an extraordinary thing. The four disciples are left. That woman stayed back. And because she stayed back, she was the only woman, only human being that saw the angel that guided the body of Jesus. She was the only one. Peter and John never saw these angels. She was the only person that had conversation with the angel that guided the body of Jesus. And they were asking her, why are you with me? Talk to someone and say, why are you with me? Why are you with me? The woman didn't say, oh, I had a bad day. I needed some money yesterday. Why are you crying before the sepulchre of the Lord? Oh, my child is sick. Why are you weeping? No, this. Why are you weeping? Just I want the body of the Lord. If you're God, won't you be touched? If you're Jesus, won't you be touched? Why she was weeping was not because of anything. She's just weeping because of love. She wants the body of Jesus so she can take it away. She believes she can do better. She believes she will spice and embark the body more. Even though Nicodemus brought thousand pounds worth of spices, she believes she could do more. In that. And I want to tell you something. Something remarkable happened. Because of her compassion and passion for the Lord, she came there at the right time. Jesus had just resurrected. Because if you read the next verse, Jesus now turned and said, Mary, it was just when Jesus resurrected. And do you know Jesus was supposed to go to the Father to be touched? But say, even before I go, let me, let me calm this woman down. Let me comfort her. I have seen the Lord. He said, Mary. And Mary remembered the voice and said, Master, you will be 
it a first to experience God's next move in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Okay. I know some people are living now. I just want to think, uh, yeah, someone has to be in this referendum, so the just want to be. Let us just So, it was what Mary did touch Jesus so much. You know, the time she was there was when Jesus just rose from the dead. Because Jesus told him that I have not even gone up to the Father. I'm supposed to go up first, and then I will fall. So don't touch me, but go and tell my people that I, there's no cause for alarm. They've not taken my body away. I just resurrected. I pray that somebody here will be the first to have and to know what God is doing in his or her life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because our prayer was answered. You know, very rarely will you have people who have a certain passion for the Lord. If you check, you might see only one person or two. Or whatever it is, I pray we have that passion in the name of Jesus. But also there is something still passion, but God will correct us if you have that love. When Jesus spoke to her first, because she was consumed with the passion, she didn't even know. You know, sometimes we have answered prayers, we don't know. Because we are consumed with the problem. But I pray that today we will receive grace. And that when we have answered prayers, we will know. But because of her passion, Jesus had to pray. Mary called her in a way that she would understand. And she now knew that it was the Lord that was calling her. And how joyful she would have been that her expectation would have been much more. You know, this resurrection thing up to the point of this place had never been on this level. People like Lazarus came back to life, but no, they would eventually die again. But this is the first time someone is coming back to life and is not going to die again. Mary was the first person. with people of passion in the name of Jesus. Amen. That we will love the Lord with passion in the name of Jesus. Not even Peter the great apostle was given this privilege. Not even John the beloved was given this privilege. If we read the book of Revelation chapter 3 and chapter 2, you see where Jesus was saying, I wish you were hot or cold. I would that your love was hot or cold. God doesn't like people who want people. God doesn't want people who are standing today and tomorrow they are lukewarm. Anything can go. This passion this woman showed touched the Lord so much. <coughs> so much so that before Jesus went to the Father, he gave her that privilege. So much so that she was the only one that had conversation with the angels that guided Jesus. And this woman showed courage as well. Going alone meant she would have been killed by the Roman soldiers that were guarding the grave. She wasn't afraid of death. She wasn't afraid of anything. Still telling soldiers, I believe God is calling me and you to offer our days to Him. If we do so, it won't be without favors and blessings. The Bible says the broken and contrite are the ones who will despise. You see, there are levels and there are levels in God. There are levels and there are levels. There are things God is looking at. God would have known, because He created us, that for a dead person, He do not do this kind of visitation at once. But the woman showed it. The Bible says the scriptures, the scripture that they will rise again has not been revealed to them. But she still stays there. It just tells me something like what God said about Abraham, who against hope believed in hope. When everything was out and gone, she still was holding to the Lord. I pray that will be a portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's just stand up and pray. We're going to be dedicating our love to the Lord. And that is every lukewarm thing that is in. Let the power of the Holy Ghost take it away.
this is a month of grace. A month of uncommon favor. Lord, renew my passion. Renew my love. Renew my dedication. Renew my affection for you. I don't want it to be a ritual, you know. I don't want it to be ceremony. I don't want it to be legalistic or normal. Lord, the kind of the fire that you put in this woman in my heart, oh Lord. Let it burn clearly, oh Lord. Let it never go dry, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for the boldness you gave Mary Magdalene, Lord. That she didn't even fear death. She didn't fear the she didn't fear the soldiers. She didn't fear the powers of hell. She just went straight to the grave. Something that is uncommon today, oh God. Because she knew you, oh Lord. And because she, she cared for you, Lord. How can a woman take the body of a man alone, oh God? She had faith in you, oh God. And yet she was willing to do all this. Lord, I pray that you give us, oh Lord, this passion, oh God. Let it be reignited in our hearts, oh God. That we will not take you for granted, oh Lord. But I will ask, oh Lord, that you reignite the 